Hello there, auctioneers. Uh, I am Professor van der Velde of the North Archway Zoological and Taxidermy Society, and today I will be presenting to you a variety of lots that we have been forced to put up to sale to keep our small sanctuary of dead fauna going through this lockdown. They are, I have to tell you, rather remarkable, rather rare pieces that I hope you'll be willing to bid on as the auction progresses. Um, first of all, uh, here we have Cyril. Now, Cyril looks like a fairly ordinary teddy bear uh, with a, a, a natty scarf that suggests that he maybe attended one of the lesser Oxbridge colleges. But Cyril is remarkable because um, he is the teddy bear who was at the nexus of the teddy bear's picnic. Um, because as you remember from the lyric, every bear that ever there was was gathered there for certain because today was the day that the teddy bears had their picnic. And when you think about uh, every bear that ever there was attending, that presents some remarkable logistical problems. And Cyril was the bear who solved them. Uh, obviously, if the teddy bears picnic were to take part today, then Cyril would be able to have a huge uh, database collected on Excel or, or any other uh, spreadsheet software. But the teddy bear's picnic took place at the turn of the 20th century. And so he had to manage it using a huge collection of cue cards, uh, an enormous address book and a quite remarkable homing pigeon network. Uh, Cyril's bear family, uh, we had to negotiate a lot to make sure that they didn't keep his body as his tradition and have it uh, embalmed in their hibernation cave. And instead, Cyril was donated to the museum. And uh, he has now been stuffed as his tradition in the bear community. Uh, uh, one thing that we did do, we, we, we took his brain out and uh, that is not for sale, but it is embalmed, excuse me, not embalmed, preserved in uh, fluid elsewhere, we having examined it, and it was proven that the, the part of the bear's brain that is associated with memory, normally reserved for nuts, seeds, um, position of salmon farms and whatnot, in, in Cyril was enlarged to do particularly with um, uh, addresses and names, and uh, strangely, um, in a gingham pattern as well. So that is that is our first selection that we put forward to you. Um, Secondly, uh, yes, that's what we have here. Um, this rather portly, careworn fellow um, would be known to quite a lot of you as Rocky Robin. Him of the one hit wonder from the 1950s. Now, um, it's, it's little known that uh, Rocky Robin was actually a, a biographical song about this Robin, who, when it was written, was Robin sized. Um, however, because of a contractual agreement, 50% of the royalties went to Rocky. He was a single free Robin when the song was written. And as can often happen in these sad circumstances, he, he wasn't well advised. He didn't have a good agent, a good accountant. And he got into pills, he got into barbiturates, meth, one of the first garden birds to adopt meth. And it took it, it took its toll on him. He ballooned in weight. He lost an eye in a particularly brutal fight with a starling over some uppers. He was not able to fly after a while. You can see he's got a quite um quite revolting case of the parabolic pox. And uh yeah, his beak, as if you can see there, it's it's almost it's almost come off because by the um, by the end of his life he was snorting shake and vac. So very much a, a warning from history here is Rocky Robin. Next up, our third or fourth uh, lots exhibits. This again might look to you as a fairly normal Canadian beaver, but this beaver. And there's no two ways about it. He was a monster. Madame Tussauds uh, has its chamber of horrors and we here at the Northern Archway Zoological and Taxidermy Museum have likewise because this beaver 
is the beaver that the sexual euphemism beaver was coined for. This animal, I think we can all agree, it is, it is good that it is dead, it's good that it was stuffed because it was a peeping Tom in the beaver community and when he broke loose from a Canadian zoo he was found on the Vancouver underground taking upskirt photographs and this was in the 1970s with a Polaroid camera he wasn't subtle and you can see here what at first may seem to be a rather goofy visage is one of a revolting predatory creature he uh, broke free into uh, the Vancouver parkland he built a, um, a dam as beavers will do and would often lay prone pretending to be injured waiting for naive environmentalists to come along and assist him uh, at which point the teeth would sink in he drag them back to uh, the dam and take some deeply inappropriate photographs of them it was it was only um after one member of peter was lured into his lair but was able to escape and raise the alarm that this monster was brought to justice and he was the last um, wild mammal to sit in the Canadian electric chair and um, you can see little bits of his his fear are still singed from it so we, we, we're both honoured and a little bit ashamed to have him which is why we're delighted to uh, put him up for auction this evening and last of all one of our most prized exhibits um, this remarkable creature here is the original chicken that the why did the chicken cross the road joke was written about um this is him as as he died he lived an awfully long time obviously the joke was written in 1935 um when he was just a stripling but this remarkable chicken obviously chickens can live a long time with their head chopped off uh, but that it's a few minutes this chicken lived for over 30 years and you can see in his later years he adopted a um a rockabilly approach and um this look on his face this is the look that he had as he died because rather ironically he died crossing the road and failing to look where he was coming from and um a lot of chicken anthropologists anthropologists i suppose is the word wrong word or ornithopologists have uh, posited reasons for why um, this this chicken may have died. You know, he was the chicken that the white of the chicken cross sort of joke was based upon, and so one would think he 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 had the the practice down to a T. And and they suggest that in his later years he fell on hard times, and this bow tie suggests he was forced into refereeing cockfights, and this is corroborated by the fact that his feet are in a natural bloody colour and many believe that he was so shocked by the outright violence that he had just witnessed in the chicken octagon that it was preying on his tiny chicken mind and he didn't look where he was going and an articulated truck just took him out and uh, this important icon of British comedy history passed away in sad sad circumstances but we're honoured that he has uh, been part of our museum and we're even more honoured that you are willing to place your bets for him so that are our exhibits and we hope you'll bet fairly we hope you'll bet honourably and we hope that you can find a good home for the uh, the teddy bear the robin the beaver and the chicken perhaps one over ambitious bidder might bid to get all four of them and they can create their own riddle using these exhibits thank you very much